Hi, welcome to the 14-day weather forecast. It's almost the start of another meteorological summer. Soon comes round. So, how are things shaping up? Is there any sign of dry and warm conditions developing as we head into June? As usual, I'm going to start by taking a look at the view across Europe and the North Atlantic. The animation runs from 18 GMT, Tuesday the 28th. At the outset, it's an unsettled picture. We've got low pressure there, centred close to Scotland. Westerly winds on its southern flank, bring showers, longer spells of rain not really very pleasant if it's dry and warm weather that you're hoping for. Now, as I run the sequence, what we see is that in the short term, the low pressure brings further showers, some heavy ones, possibly thundery ones at times. However, as we head into the weekend, all change because it's high pressure, which is building in from the west, becoming the dominant feature of the UK's weather. At this point, there could still be some showers around in the east of Britain, but in central and western counties, it's looking mostly dry. And that continues to be the case really as we go through Sunday and into the early part of next week because this high pressure doesn't go anywhere fast. But then the signs of a change again taking place at the end of the high pressure starts centering further west in the Atlantic, much cooler air from the north begins to push down towards the UK. A good deal of uncertainty though by this point and I'll look at how the different computer models are handling this possible development later on. Here's the jet stream and upper air temperature sequence associated with the same GFS run. Quite a strong jet there to start off with, heading across the southern part of Britain. As I run this, what we see is that high pressure from the west does start to build in. The jet begins migrating further north, at least for a time. But by the end here, there's a big temperature contrast and quite a strong jet there moving down across the northern half of the United Kingdom. Lots happening through the first week, and I think there's quite a lot of uncertainty just about how things will play out with that high pressure, at least after the first two or three days that it's been building in from the west. Here are some charts showing the potential surface conditions. So uh, this is Wednesday the 29th, showers across much of England and Wales, even there in Scotland and Northern Ireland too, although perhaps fewer if this is right. Forwards to Friday, it's beginning to turn drier. There are still some showers around and at this point at least temperatures are nothing really exciting close to or perhaps still a little bit below the seasonal average. Into the weekend, Sunday here, quite warm there in the northwest as that high pressure starts building and becoming dominant and it's really a dry picture everywhere if this is right. As I mentioned there could still be a few showers which are not showing up here in eastern Britain but mostly fine at this point. The Mogreps G temperature plot for London shows quite a consistent picture as we head through the first week. The lines represent the individual forecasts from all of the runs in the ensemble model when they're closely packed together, which they are reasonably so on this chart for the first week really. It indicates a high degree of confidence in the given scenario being more or less correct. There is a bigger spread appearing there as we head through the first few days of June by the 4th. If you look on the right hand chart, side of the chart there's quite a spread developing between the individual runs but that's a long way off. So it looks fairly close to the average, maybe a little bit above on some days. Nighttime lows there stay in close to double figures really so all in all fairly close to where they should be. Rainfall. These are the forecast aggregates in millimetres for days 0 to 5 from the ECM and GFS models. Reasonable consistency actually this week. Much of the country is seeing totals of between 10 and 25 millimetres. A few locations seeing large amounts and a few small amounts, but generally quite an even distribution. And although it's not a vast amount of rain, I think given the soggy nature of the ground in much of the UK, it could still cause a few problems. Moving forwards to the 0 to 10 day charts, totals have increased a little bit, but not massively. I think indicating quite a lot of dry weather is likely 
in the day five to day 10 part of a forecast period, especially in southern and central regions, maybe wetter in the north. So as we head towards the end of the first week, how do the deterministic models compare to each other? Here is the GFS, Tuesday the 4th of June, the high pressure having a good deal of influence at this point, but the early indications there of that northerly plunge beginning to manifest. The Canadian model, high pressure strongly building across the northern half of the UK into Scandinavia. And it's possibly also just worth keeping an eye on that area of low pressure to the southwest because there's always a chance with this type of pattern that the breakdown when it occurs will be coming up from the south rather than down from the north or from the west. So that would be something to keep an eye on, as I say. The German ICO model, high pressure dominating. The European ECM, also high pressure being a big player, but it is starting to back further west into the Atlantic, build a little bit northwards too, and there is that indication of cooler air starting to push down from the north. Finally, I suppose the party pooper, perhaps in quite a few people's eyes, the UK Met Office Global, not always, but this week, because it's got a nasty looking area of low pressure there coming into play to the north of the UK, the cooler and showery conditions already beginning to arrive. High pressure centered further west and north. It doesn't look like a particularly favorable pattern to go on to develop warm and dry conditions. But unfortunately, this is, real, this is as far as the uh, global model goes. So it's not possible to say what would happen, but on balance, I think it would be quite a changeable and cooler picture in the days which followed. Taking them all together, so it looks as though towards the end of the first week, high pressure will still be a big player in the UK's weather. At least that's what the majority of these model runs are showing. But in the north, it could be starting to turn cooler and more changeable and increasing risk of showers or even longer spells of rain. How do things shape up as we head through the second week? Does that general theme continue? It's all about the ensemble data of this range, of course, just the trends and the probabilities. This is the 16-day GEFS plot for London. The upper air temperatures across the top half, often above the 30-year average, the thick purple line there, the ensemble mean stays above it for the, well, really throughout the second week. With that said, there is quite a big spread showing up there. A few cooler runs coming into mix quite early on. Perhaps those are ones which are bringing that plunge of Arctic air southwards across all parts of the UK. Also, a couple of very warm ones, outliers really, towards the end of the second week. And with those two be uh, to verify, we could well see temperatures down at the ground level, pushing up towards 30 Celsius. They are, as I say, outliers, just a very small number of them, unlikely, but not completely discounted in the same way that the much cooler ones early on there shouldn't be discounted either. But on balance, probably close to or a little bit above the norm. In terms of rainfall across the bottom, it looks like a dry, at least a mostly dry picture early on. The number of spikes there starts to increase towards the end, a more changeable pattern perhaps returning therefore as we head towards the end of the second week. The two meter temperature data tables for London, not a great deal to say about them. It's the oranges here, which are dominating. So 16 to 20 maximums, 21 to 25. The vast majority of runs fallen into those buckets. So it's not looking cool. Perhaps temperatures close to or a little bit above the average overall in Southern Britain. Nighttime lows, the yellows there, 11 to 15. Often staying into double figures there for the, the, the overnight low temperatures. Up to Manchester, the General patterns quite similar to London, as you'd expect, but there are some differences. The ensemble mean is close to the average there for much of the second week, perhaps more runs at showing that cooler air making it to this part of the UK. Also across the bottom there, there are more rain spikes than there were on the London chart, a greater chance of showers or longer spells of rain. Two meter temperature data tables fall in a very, very similar pattern, just at a slightly lower level than the London ones. 
up to Glasgow and this is a little bit different. The uh, 850 HPA temperature part to plot the upper air temperature part is closer to the average throughout the second week but there is a big spread there. Quite a lot of the runs are dipping below that 30 year norm which are likely to be the ones which are maintaining the cooler plunge from the north. Also the risk of rain is increasing there through the second week. By the end of it it's looking like quite a changeable picture, a, quite a high chance of rain or at least showers on any given day. The two meter temperature data tables for Glasgow, lower values than on Manchester or London, the yellow there 11 to 15 being the maximum on most days. That's the, what the majority of runs are showing. Perhaps something of a warming signal later on as that initial plunge of cooler air from the north is cut off. The rainfall probability charts from the ECM model, these show the chance of five millimeters or more of rain falling on a given day. So these are for the first three days of week two. The first two charts there actually point towards a mostly dry picture away from the uh, far northwest. By the third day, so day 10, in terms of forecast period, the risk of rain has increased in all areas. Moving forwards to the following three days, a low to moderate chance of five millimeters or rain falling on any of these uh, days for wettest conditions, probably in the northwest, in Scotland in particular. The GEFS pressure anomaly chart for days 10 to 15 shows, if anything, a slightly positive anomaly across the UK through this period. It could well be though that a lot of that is generated early on and the signal is for pressure to be falling later. Does the data table for York, for mean surface level pressure data table, support it? I think it does because there's a greater chance there of pressure being close to or above the average through the first days of the second week. Later on, the amount of orange decreases, the amount of yellow increases a little bit, as does the green in the columns, those runs which are indicating lower pressure. So taking those last two charts together, the signal may be early on for pressure to be above the average and then dipping as we head through the second week. So to summarize, Week one, it starts with showers or long spells of rain, but then high pressure starts to build in from the west, so it turns drier. Cloud amounts during that drier period will be varying, but there should be some warm, sunny spells around. Week two, mostly dry to start off with, but cooler and showery conditions are likely to develop in the north, and by the end of the week, the more changeable theme extends across all parts of the United Kingdom. So there we have it. Quite a mixed bag on the whole, but it looks as though the start of the meteorological summer could well coincide with a period of drier and more settled weather. And then towards the end of the forecast period through the second week, uncertainty really does grow just about how much more changeable it will become, whether or not that changeable theme will extend down into seven counties or will high pressure maintain its influence. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video as usual and found it useful. If you did, then please consider hitting the like button below and subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Also, stay up to date with the day-to-day -day weather developments by checking out the weatheroutlook.com website. Thanks very much now. Bye.